evening, everybody. We'll call to order the Vancouver Public Schools Board of Directors meeting for Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017. You will note that all board directors are present, with the exception of Dale Rice, who has an excused absence this evening. We will start out with the design to showcase programs of choice for Lisa School programs with Chris Olson, the Executive Director of Teaching and Learning, and Deanna Hogan, Lisa Principal. Good afternoon. Whoa. That's, that's hello, everybody. This is my graceful entrance. <laughs> Dr. Webb, members of the board, cabinet, staff, and community guests. Today you're going to hear about the Leaser Campus. And under the Leaser Campus, there are five discrete programs. They serve students K through 12. And it is my pleasure at this time to introduce the first year principal of this program, Deanna Hogan. for the introduction, and thank you, Board and Dr. Webb, for the opportunity to share about our programs. And I'd like to introduce real quick my associate principal, Anita Chase. She's my focus manager. She's going to make sure I don't go over time today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mama. So, um, Lisa is unique. It is the only alternative school in Vancouver Public School District. Students come to us for a variety of reasons with a variety of educational plans. And we have five unique programs, as Chris was saying, in order to try and meet those individual needs. Recognizing that students are unique with their own educational goals, our mission is to promote success for each student by creating an educational pathway for them. We are committed to support all students on their journey to become career, college, and life ready. They, oh, that went the wrong way. There we go. There are many factors that make us unique. For one, we have a K-12 population. Actually, we serve students from kindergarten all the way up to age 21. Most of our students access our online programs, and because of our flexibility, we have many students who are medically fragile or who are teen parents who are working full time. Our VLA and Open Doors um, entities, they actually fluctuate quite a bit throughout the school year, usually peaking in population at mid-year. Uh, Vancouver Home Connection actually started about 12 years ago with 12 families and now serves over 200 students. Vancouver Virtual Learning started about seven years ago, started with 20 students, and now serves well over 400 throughout the school year. Vancouver Home Connection open providing an opportunity for homeschooling parents in the area to have a parent partnership with the school district. Many of the families wanted to be very involved in their students education and so thought that was a good way for them to get that educational experience. Certified teachers use district approved curriculum and um, to teach those standards and direct that work with the parents who then enhance and supplement the educational experience at home. Our elementary population, kindergarten through sixth grade, attend on Mondays and Wednesdays and receive their core instruction in English, math, social studies, and science, as well as a Spanish elective. Our secondary program, grade 7 to 12, they come on Tuesdays and Thursdays for their core instruction. Fridays are really the fun days. Fridays are when we have all grade levels, K through 12, for elective experiences. That include things like world travels, off the wall um, science, chimes, uh, drama, technology courses as well. So it makes for a really fun experience and very busy day on Fridays. Virtual Learning Academy was originally developed to provide an in-district online opportunity for families who wanted that kind of experience. This program works well for independent learners who are self-motivated and desire flexibility. The personalized education plan is developed with a certified teacher. Students come on campus one day a week for three hours to engage with that certified teacher around their academic progress and their goals. Virtual Learning Academy is an umbrella program that supports many different options for students to reach their educational goals. I discussed a little bit about our main campus for virtual learning, but we also have satellite campuses at each of the comprehensive high schools. Students in those programs are credit deficient and may not graduate on time without the intervention. DLA offers, offers the flexibility to them to gain credits quickly and therefore meet those on-time graduation goals. 
and allows them to stay within their resident school environment, which allows for that personalization. We also have three re-engagement pro um, programs, Back on Track, Star, and Open Doors. Back on Track was developed several years ago to meet the needs of students who had severe discipline issues at school so that we could work on the skills that would make them successful and then send them back to the comprehensive. Star and um, Open Doors opened recently within Leeser. Online works best for students who can work independently, are motivated, have good reading skills, can manage their time, have internet service because everything's web-based, um, can come to the three-hour uh, mandated session with their teacher for progress evaluation. We do serve students with IEPs. They sometimes have to come more frequently so that we can accommodate their goals. I mentioned briefly that STAR and Open Doors um, came into being a couple years ago. Success through active roadmap mapping came as an answer to those students who had come to us through back on track but weren't quite ready to go back to the comprehensive or had not really shown success in the comprehensive. Those, that program really focuses on social emotional learning, skills, and academics. Students come five days a week and work with a teacher on those skills that are evaluated on a daily basis. It's a really an impressive program because we see students who really struggled in school reach success and do well and move on. Open Doors was developed by the state a couple years ago as a re-engagement program for high school students who are significantly credit deficient, who have dropped out or are at risk of dropping out. The program serves students grades at ages 16 to 21 who meet the credit eligibility requirements. Because these students are not reflected in the graduation rate, we have the flexibility and the space to meet them where they are to reach their life and job and career goals. We connect students to community resources such as partners and careers they have a better chance of finding a job. And at the same time, students are working online to earn credits for a diploma or to prepare for the GED testing. Life is not always easy or kind to our students, and some of them come needing some basic resources so that they can reach their academic potential. So we partner with the mobile FCRC and have created a space in our school where we can have those basic needs such as underwear, socks, toothbrushes, toothpastes, and food available for students and families to address that need. We also this year had a new staff member added who's an advocate, a student advocate, and I want to thank Dr. Webb for recognizing the need and providing that resource because she's been doing amazing work with our most high-risk students, really sitting down with them to identify what those student barriers are to education, what their strengths are, and what kind of resources she can connect them with both on-site and within the community. And while we don't have any data to show her effectiveness yet, we're working on that, we have plenty of stories that show that she is doing a wonderful job of engaging those students. We also have community partnerships with Community Services Northwest providing drug and alcohol counseling on site, with Family Solutions providing counseling on site, and we work with the homeless liaison in the district as well as um, with juvenile detention, which is a juvenile court for students who have been adjudicated. We believe that all students need to be connected with post-secondary goals. So we have a career counselor on site. We um, have students part in partners and careers in the Skills Center and Running Start, and we're working to expand our work in this area. Our vision moving forward is to continue refining our programs. This year, we started implementing positive behavior and intervention supports, and we worked on our standards and expectations. We're going to continue that work next year by adding an advisory time with all of our students across all programs to implement a social emotional learning um, <coughs> curriculum in order to help these students be successful and also align it with our restorative philosophy and practices while including some avid academic strategies so that they do well academically within our programs. We're very intentional with our professional development teachers to support this work and next year we're adding parent education classes to really strengthen our parent partnership program so that parents can do the work they want to do with the students at home. So we're at Leicester campus, home of the Ocelot. We have ALE requirements that we have to meet which includes weekly contact with students, monitoring monthly progress, and creating intervention plans for students who are not being successful. We are personalized learning 
We uh, value relationships with our students and foster those who are flexible, diverse, unique, and complex. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have special recognitions, two sets of special recognitions this evening. The first is special recognition of Zach Desjardins, Manager of Instructional Technology. And to um, speak to the recognition, we have Christina Ironmonger, Chief Digital Officer, and Mark Stoker from the Board of Directors. Dr. Webb, school board members, community guests, uh, it is with great pleasure that I present Zach Desjardins, the Manager of Instructional Technology, and a recent recipient of the Consortium of School Networking, better known as COSIN, a Next Generation Leader Award. Zach, would you come on up? Uh, this award is a national initiative that honors emerging K-12 educational technology leaders that have taken steps to drive technology programs and accelerate learning success in schools. This award recognizes individuals who demonstrate the core beliefs that technology enables innovation in our educational systems, which result in greater efficiencies and productivity. Technology is a critical tool to personalize learning. Technological fluency allows our children to be prepared for the world of today and tomorrow. Equitable and ubiquitous access to technology is a necessity. And global connections are vital to transforming the education process and recruiting learning. Zach demonstrates all of these beliefs and is instrumental in creating the conditions for our successful implementation of one-to-one -one technology supported programs for the purpose of increasing student ownership of time, pace, path, and place of learning. He demonstrates these core beliefs through his collaborative, forward-thinking leadership style, his work with buildings through his team of 16 instructional technology facilitators that share their experience through co-facilitation of lessons and planning, mentoring, and coaching, and his work with industry partners that support our district initiatives. Since receiving this award, Zach was invited by COSIN to travel to Washington, D.C. to engage in discussions about technology and education with Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler. For those of you who may know, she's a key member of the House Appropriations Committee, which decides on funding on education and educational technology. So this award is, re award is just the beginning for Zach, as he continues to innovate and lead and support success for all students in DPS. So without any further ado, thank you, Zach. Oh, 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 okay. Zach, on behalf of the entire board, I want to congratulate you on the significant national recognition. As a board member, it's important for us to know that the money our taxpayers are paying through our technology levy is being put to its proper use, and that is to leverage student achievement. Your leadership is helping to ensure that. To paraphrase something Zach says, this really is not about the gadgets, but rather empowering teachers and students to teach and learn the 21st century tools that are engaging, flexible, and relevant to the world they live in today and tomorrow. So I want to thank you for your efforts. Again, tell you congratulations. I know you've got tremendous family support. Would you like to introduce your family? <laughs> sure. Pat <laughs> said I wasn't able to speak today, so uh, no. Um, yes, my lovely wife, without her support, you know, I mean, she's wonderful. Um, and I have our, our five crazy kids there. Anthony, Anthony, and Avi, and, and Abe all go to Harney, one of our own elementary schools. And Atticus and um, Axel will, will be there eventually. <laughs> Quite a fan club. <laughs> Congratulations, Zach, on that well-deserved honor. Next, we have Employee Excellence Awards for May. And to introduce those awards, we have Kathy Everett, Assistant Superintendent, Human Resources, and Rosemary Pryor from the Board of Directors. Good afternoon, Dr. Webb, members of the board, community guests, and cabinet. It is my privilege to present the May 2017 Employee Excellence Award to six deserving staff members. This award recognizes individual employees for creating a positive, caring, and productive school environment through exceptional effort, dedication, and performance in their areas of responsibility. Employees are nominated by colleagues, supervisors, 
parents and community members and students. Nomination forms can be found on the school district website. A panel made up of representatives from throughout the district reviews all nominations and selects those to receive recognition. Tonight's Excellence Award recipients are Meredith Wells, John Zingali, Lori Ritchie, Tracy Bull, Nita Brashears, and Paige Wilson. If the award recipients could please join me up here at this time, I'd appreciate that. recognize Meredith Wells, Teacher Skyview High School, hired August 2013. So Meredith, I'll have you step out so you know who you are. <laughs> Meredith is a champion for social justice and equity. As advisor of the school's diversity committee and gay straight alliance and an advocate for Skyview's first ever black student union and major club, Meredith empowers students. Her leadership class helps them find their voices as they mentor freshmen, raise cultural awareness, and demonstrate their skills in a TED Talk style event. She continues this work by helping to improve Skyview's school-wide culture as a climate and culture coach. As a result, students feel more comfortable and valued, and Skyview enjoys nearly an entire building of leaders. Meredith is an unfailing source of calm in the storm. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'd like to recognize John Zingali, teacher, Vancouver High Tech Preparatory, hired July 2013. Such is John's influence that his students gravitate to and even dress like him. <laughs> John channels that influence to challenge them to think in greater terms about the world around them. Endlessly creative, he gives his students opportunities to create a virtual reality tour of Fort Vancouver National Historic Site think critically about citizens who stood up for what they believed in and developed museum exhibits. His cross-discipline assignments deepen students' understanding, not only of history, but of other subjects too. John is a highly respected educator, and now he's also the first person to win an excellence award while working at high tech preparatory. Next, I'd like to recognize Lori Ritchie, music specialist at Elementary School in September 1992. Lori's leadership qualities earned her several nominations from her colleagues for this award. This active leader and longtime district employee presents her peer music educators with professional development opportunities and curriculum resources. She has even undertaken the enormous task of inventorying, ordering, and distributing equipment and materials to ensure that all Vancouver Public School elementary schools can implement an instrumental, instructional method that integrates music with movement, speech, and drama. Lori is a key figure in Walnut Grove's assemblies and events. When it comes to the success of music education at the school and in this district, Lori is instrumental. <laughs> And now I'd like to recognize a great team from Schumann Elementary. We have Tracy Bull, Secretary, hired November 1995. Nita Brashears, Nutrition Services Clerk, hired August 1997. And Paige Wilson, Enrollment Clerk, hired October 2005. Tracy, Paige, and Nita often are among the first that visitors see when they enter Chinook. They are resourceful, cheerful, and helpful ambassadors for the school. All are master multitaskers. On a typical day, you might find Tracy helping a student with a personal issue while also assisting teachers and greeting parents. Paige is quick to jump in when the, any student needs help, and as a result, they adore her warm present. Nita is welcoming to everyone she encounters, whether they're students or the cafeteria team, said their nominator. Individually, Tracy, Paige, and Nita are fantastic. As a team, they are simply phenomenal. Congratulations.
Well, it's my privilege on behalf of the board to congratulate these wonderful people that work every day in our schools to help our children be better. And I just want to let you know, for the children with whom you work, um, you see far beyond the moment and see in them what they cannot yet see in themselves. You inspire them to learn, to wonder, to acquire, to create. You invite them to engage in the adventure of life, even though you sometimes wonder if they're listening. And I can assure you, they're not only listening, they're also watching, and they learn from you. So most importantly, you care what they, that they become good and kind people, and your kindness and wisdom show them the way. So, in the words of Shakespeare from Twelfth Night, I can, no, I, can, uh, I can make no answer, but thanks, and thanks, and ever more thanks. So congratulations. Congratulations again. Vancouver Public Schools is fortunate to have such exceptional employees. We have one citizen who joined us to comment this evening, and that's Dana Albrecht. Dana, if you would please um, step up to Dais, state your name, your address, and you have three minutes to share your information with us. Good evening, Dr. Webb, board members, community guests. Last time I came, I was a little nervous. This time I feel much better. <laughs> so I'm here on behalf of the Spanish Immersion Pathway Program. Um, we just have a couple of questions and requests um, from the board. We're requesting more follow through and communication with parents. Um, in the past, there's been a little bit of struggle with that. Most recently, I know we're trying to develop and make the program better. Um, there was, our last meeting was May 4th, and we've only had one email since um, explaining to us that more information is to follow soon. So we're kind of wondering when soon might be. Um, we would like to see the parent advisory board that they are promoting. Um, we'd like to see that established by the end of the year, if possible, um, or at the very minimum before fall. Parents, we're very committed. We do not mind putting in the work. We do not mind giving in free hours, free time. We do not mind running your errands. We would love to see this program go. We are committed. Um, we also would like to see more outreach efforts. Um, most recently, I've had some conversations with the Geyser parents that are also part of this program that should be filtering into Fort. Um, I was informed that they had a meeting that was after ours, May 9th. I was informed that meeting was canceled with a further one to be scheduled. Um, I, they just found out today that that meeting has been rescheduled for tomorrow. So we would sure like to see more outreach efforts in that and giving them more notice to be as strong and committed and part of this program as we are. Um, most, most importantly, we would love to see support from the board to ensure that staffing is in place for this program to thrive. And if there's a shortage in the budget at the school level, we just ask the board be proactively supporting that this becomes a developing, while well, we know it's developing, we are wanting to see it become an amazing magnet program like the others. Thank you for your time. And per board protocol, we don't respond to those questions here. We take that information under consideration um, and we appreciate your input. Do we have, Dr. Webb, do we have any written communications that the board has not sent? No written correspondence. And next we have the consent, consent agenda. Um, I will entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Move approval of consent agenda. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any items that need to be pulled? Any discussion or questions? No? Okay, no discussion. Then we will call vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. If I could, Madam Chair. Please do. Yes, with that action. The board has acted through the employment report on the appointment of Abby Davis as principal at Geyser Middle School. Congratulations, Abby. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great things for the Grizzlies. <laughs> items of regular business. First up, we have a recommendation to accept completion of bid number 
216-2016-0017, Paving Restoration at Geyser Meadow School. Dr. Whip. I think this is fairly self-explanatory. The fund source is the general fund. It's the recommendation that the Board of Directors accept completion of bid number 2016-017 with Vancouver Paving Company for the paving restoration project at Geyser Middle School, including change order number one, in the amount of $3,024 plus Washington State sales tax, and that the final payment of $56,673.82 be made, except retainage, which is to be held for 45 days per statute. And we will entertain a motion. Uh, second. For a vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, any discussion? No. Okay, for a vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion passes. Second item of regular business is a recommendation to approve purchase agreement number 2017-009, iPad protective cases. The district is recommending purchase of 6,000 iPad protective cases. These cases will protect new iPads being issued to all third and fourth graders, as well as middle school students at Alki and Mac as a continuation of the technology levy funded phased one-to-one -one technology deployment. Uh, the fund source is the general fund technology levy. It's a recommendation that the board of directors approve the purchase of 6,000 iPad protective cases in the amount of 141,000 plus applicable Washington state sales tax to meet the one-to-one -one computing needs for the district's staff and students. And we'll entertain motions on this recommendation. I move that we approve the recommendation. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Um, I think I, when it was for the younger grades, I thought protection, because there's younger, newer to the technology, but the extension to the middle grades, it's, are you finding it's, We've always had protective cases um, that are part of our standard deployment at all levels. Oh. Oh. I thought so. Yes. The leather things. Not hard cases? Um, are these hard cases or leather cases? They're not the leather cases. They're the more oh, yeah. shell. Durable. Yeah. Durable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? In that case, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion to approve the recommendation carries. Dr. Webb, superintendent's report? No superintendent's report. Any board reports or comments? No. Okay. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.